Yo, so last week I started my home recording bootcamp series and I actually had a lot of good feedback from you guys regarding the series, a lot of good questions and today's episode was supposed to be about plugins, how to install them and how to get them working in your digital audio workstation. However, I received a really good question and that was how do I optimize my PC for recording and there are a ton of things that you can do but I'm just going to bring it down to three in this video and then next week we are going to touch on the plugins. I just decided that it's a very good question and I am going to slot this in between the episodes and yeah so I put this video together for you guys. Sweet! Now let's swing over to my computer and I'm just going to show you three things that I recommend you do before you start home recording. If you guys have any other tips, please share them down below in the comments. Share them with me. I have most probably missed something. I mean, jeepers, we're all learning, right? So yeah, if you know anything, send, put it down below in the comments and yeah. So let's get cracking. Okay, cool. So let's dive right in. And these are just three ways that you can optimize your home computer for recording. So you're gonna wanna open up your control panel. You're gonna to wanna to go to power options over here. By default, Windows always uses the balanced power plan, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to change that and you're gonna to wanna to select the high performance power plan. Cesium may use more energy because it's allowing your hardware to run at their maximum capability. So you're gonna to wanna to select high performance, close up control panel, this brings us to point number Two, startup applications. Now, as time goes on and you're using a computer and you're installing applications and you're trying out different things, a lot of applications and processes sneak into the startup of your machine. So as you start up your machine, you might find there are a lot of undesirable programs that are running the moment you turn it on, taking up resources. So there are two ways to fix this depending on what version of Windows you are running. So if you're running Windows 7, you're gonna open up your um, start menu and you're gonna type in MS config. And in Windows 10, it comes up as system configuration. In Windows 7, it comes, comes up as MS config, okay? Then you're gonna to wanna to have a look at your startup items. In Windows 10, they have taken this away and moved it to the task manager. In Windows 7, you will see a list of startup applications, okay? And then from there, we can have a look at them over here. You're going to want to have a look at what's starting up when Windows starts up. Like, for example, my Realtek HD Audio Manager is enabled for the purposes of this video. You're going to want to disable that because my Focusrite interface is managing my audio. I don't need something else to manage my audio, so let's turn that off. My, if I look, my firewall, okay, Glasswire. Glasswire is actually a great software-based firewall for your machine, just to see what outside connections your machine's making to the internet. It's great, I always leave it on because it's non-intrusive. Go have a look at Glasswire. It's actually quite interesting to see what connections your computer makes to the outside world when you open up different applications. It's really interesting. Cool. Then I see I used to have a Kensington trackball over here. I have since moved it to my office because I like working on it at my office. Now I can disable this. There's no point in these drivers or this application starting up when Windows starts, okay? Yes, the impact is low, but a lot of small things add up at the end of the day. I am gonna to wanna to turn off Windows Defender notifications because I do not need them. Why? That brings us to point number three. Antivirus, okay, antivirus is important. I understand that it can have an impact on CPU, but if you set it up correctly, it actually doesn't, and I'm gonna show you that right now. So, I'm actually using Malwarebytes as a trial because I'm actually trying to decide what I want to use at home. Um, it seems to be doing a very good job at the moment. It seems pretty cool, um, but I haven't decided on it totally yet, so I'm just waiting for the trial to finish and then I'll try something else. If I don't like that, then I'll just go back to using Malwarebytes. But anyways, why is antivirus important in this? It is because all antivirus products have something called real-time protection, or they'll call it um, on-access scanner, something to that effect. Basically what that does is, whenever a file is being written to your hard disk, or being read from your hard disk, the antivirus product will scan that file. Look, it's milliseconds that it scans it for. However, that does add to CPU 
resources. Now, if you if you are recording in real time, low latency recording on your in your door, this will most likely scan the WAV files that the DAW is producing in your working directory. So what you want to do is tell antivirus, hey, this folder is safe. Please do not scan anything inside this folder. I don't want you to touch it. So if anything happens there, just ignore it, okay? So that's to free up resources as WAV files are being written to your folder path. Now, first off, you're going to want a static folder path for all of your for all of your projects, okay? Mine is on the E drive. Okay? So if I go to settings and I go to exclusions and I add an exclusion, I exclude a file or folder and I go to select folder and I go to my E drive and now I'm already in Reaper. So let me just show you how you'll get there. You'll just select the drive that wherever your folder is and then I'm going to choose Reaper, select that folder, click OK. Now Reaper, which is where all of my project files lie. Okay, that's where all of our project files sit is now excluded. Another exclusion that is good to add in is your plugins directory. So let's do that. Let's go add exclusion, select the file or folder, go next, select a folder, go to my C drive. I'm going to go to program files, select Reaper and OK. Because inside Reaper is a plugins folder and I by default install all of my plugins in that plugins directory. Um, if you're using a different directory, you're going to select that directory and exclude it. Now, I'm done. I have added all my exclusions in. So now when anything happens out of the Reaper folder or out of my Reaper project files folder, I am good. Antivirus is not going to touch it, meaning your computer is protected, but also optimized for home recording. If you guys have any suggestions, any more things that we can do to better our computers for home recording, please let us know down below in the comments, okay? So yeah, let me know. This is a learning experience for everybody. So yeah, these are just three things that I came up with and that I have found that really, really helped me. So have yourselves a rad day. Cheers. Thanks.